The ERC-1155 token standard allows the creation of fungible, semi-fungible, and non-fungible tokens in one single token standard. This makes ERC-1155s a sort of combination of the more popular ERC-20 and ERC-721 tokens. What this means is that both fungible and non-fungible tokens can be created within the same standard. So you might wonder why this is useful. Pokemon cards and Canadian dollars aren't combined, and they probably shouldn't be. So what's the aim of tying the code of currencies and collectibles together? The main reason is gaming. Video games typically have both currencies and collectibles. You buy a sword with all your hard-earned gold, or you sell your shiny new shield for gold to then buy a potion. Video games are rife with transactions like these, and using two different standards like ERC-20 to handle gold and ERC-721 to handle swords, shields, and potions can be difficult and unwieldy. When you have two separate code standards exchanging and interacting, it can get messy behind the scenes. ERC-1155 also allows for a single smart contract to handle all the tokens, rather than at least two for ERC-20 and ERC-721. On the Ethereum blockchain, efficiency in smart contract construction and transaction minimization are everything for developers. You don't want to spend hundreds of dollars deploying your code, and your users don't want to spend hundreds of dollars to mess around with it. The more streamlined you can get when building your backend, the better, and ERC-1155 is a huge help with that. But beyond games, there are many other real-life scenarios that make use of both fungible and non-fungible items. For example, digital content and artwork. There's only one original The Scream in the world. If Edvard Munch were alive and a blockchain enthusiast, he could make it a unique, non-fungible ERC-1155 token. At the same time, he could also sell less valuable print versions of The Scream as fungible ERC-1155 tokens. In this case, ERC-1155 allows for accessibility, simplicity, and efficiency on the artist's side and the buyer side. Whether or not your blockchain use case needs fungible, non-fungible, and semi-fungible items, it's always good to have the capability to offer these tokens in a single standard. At the end of the day, merging the two makes a lot of sense and will save both developers and users a lot of time and money.